Hey, happy 4th of July. I've got more than just our country's independence for you to celebrate. We've got independence from the expanded Humda data requirements to celebrate. That's right. If your institution originated, keyword, originated less than 500 closed-in loans in the last two years, 16 and 17, then you are a small filer for closed-in loans. If you originated less than 500 lines, then you're a small filer for lines. Now, just like today's rules, we already had 25 closed-in loans, 500 lines. They basically brought the loan threshold up to the line threshold. So nothing new for the line of credit coverage. There is one more criteria. You have to have at least a satisfactory CRA rating. So satisfactory in CRA, you say, yep, we're good on that. We make less than 500 loans or we make less than 500 lines or both then you are going to be exempt from the expanded Humda data requirements for 2018. So in other words, we're just talking about what you've done the first six months of collecting and reporting. What do you do with all this stuff? We all knew regulatory relief was coming, but we didn't know what to do. That's what this is about. So if you meet that criteria, I'm going to call you a small filer. That's not an official regulatory word, but you know plain English here at Bankers Supply and Solding, right? So you're going to still use the same coverage and the same exemption requirements that we've come to know for 2018. The threshold just got bumped up to 2000 or 500 for each loans and lines. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of sampling of the data that you won't have to collect or report. Total points and fees. That would be your loan costs, lender credits. There's five things there. Rate spread, prepayment penalty term, property value, introductory rate period. The non-amortizing features, there's four of those. Balloons, interest only, negative amortization, and this other non-amortizing features, those are all off the table. The application channel, how was it received? Your SAFE Act number. Unique loan identifier. Now that's a little strange. They didn't say anything about the legal entity identifier. You're still going to have to have that. But the ULI, but you're still going to have to have some way to identify the application. It just doesn't have to be with the two-digit, check digit, all that kind of stuff. Parcel numbers. So we're still going to do geocoding, but parcel number is not a requirement. Credit score. Now, this gets kind of complicated because they're talking about different sections of the Dodd-Frank Act and things that are removed and what's left and all this, but that's not a complete list. At the end of these two sections that the Regulatory Relief Act brought us, it basically says, other information that the Bureau may require, and they removed that. We are right now going through what is the original Dodd-Frank Act requiring, what did the CFPB add, and we're trying to come up with an exhaustive list of things that you'll have to do. If you'll be patient, stay tuned. Now, I know that you're not going to want to even collect, for instance, credit score, maybe. And so therefore, you need to know, what do I have to do, Dave? We're going to get that to you, uh, but we want to make sure that it's accurate, and I'm trying to get this out to you as soon as possible so that you can celebrate this. All right, small filers, you're still subject to Humda. Make sure you understand that. This is just the 2018 data trying to provide some relief. And what the CFP, CFPB said they're going to do is you're going to use the same LAR, and you're going to have these exempt fields now. So they're going to issue an updated filing instruction guide, or FIG, and it will have a code for, I'm a small filer, this is exempt for me. So they'll be coming out with a new code with that. You're still going to submit your LAR through the same Humda platform, and they are saying in this press release that a beta version of that will be coming out soon. Don't know exactly when that is, but obviously before the end of 18. They also said that there'll be more guidance coming for you, right? Now, I'm starting to look at my crystal ball a bit. This is just for 2018 data. There could be a different set of rules for 2019. We don't know for sure, but this is just what do we do with this six months of data that we already have. They're saying, we're gonna basically issue you a code that you can put, I'm exempt from that in these certain fields. So I want you to just celebrate but also relax a little bit that there's maybe more things are coming yet.
we're going to go through and figure out what the original requirements of Humda were, what the Dodd-Frank added to that, and what the Dodd-Frank gave the CFPB liberty about, and we'll figure out what things of those we can back off. You, I know, want to be able to tell your lenders, hey, we don't need to do automated underwriting, for instance. That would be nice to not even have to collect it. And so we're going to get you that list. That'll be coming soon. More information guaranteed. So I just want you to, to relax a little bit. Stay tuned, though, is the key to this thing. More information's coming. So we're going to take all this complicated stuff. We're going to turn it into plain English because that's what we do here at Bankers Plant Salting. Thanks. Oh, and congratulations.